Hi Year 11, this video is going to go over the shape of bacteria and some of their structures. When we're talking about the shape of bacteria, please recognize they can be classified according to their shape. So you'll get some bacteria that are rod shaped or bacilli. Um, Salmonella is a great example of this, so is something called typhoid. You can get round ones, spherical ones called cocci. Um, so Staphylococcus, which is something that causes boils and pimples, is a good source of that. There are some bent rods, which is called Vibrio. Um, so Vibrio cholera is an example of that one. Or you get some spiral shaped bacteria, Spirillia, um, and they can cause things like syphilis, which is just well horrible, really. But there you are. The, it's important to also recognize that some of the structures that bacteria have determine whether they are a particular type of bacteria or another type of bacteria. Um, and that's to do with whether they're vulnerable to certain types of chemicals or not. Um, when we talk about the structure of a bacteria, it's important to recognize that bacteria are prokaryotic and they are single celled. So that means that they don't have a defined nucleus. There is no um, nuclear envelope or membrane around their DNA. They have something that in some textbooks is called a nucleoid or a plasmid, but it's essentially a ring of DNA, a closed loop. They're really small, so broadly 0.5 to 2 micrometers. And remember, one micrometer um, is basically, well, one thousandth of a millimeter. Um, the other thing you need to be getting from that in terms of their size is around the outside of them, they have this slime capsule and that slime capsule is what it sounds like. It's a layer of basically slime of chemicals that they make to provide them with protection against the environment. They don't have skin, they don't have hair, they don't have a tough hide or um, thick cellular material that other um, more complicated life forms like plants would have. So they have this slimy capsule to stop them from drying out or being exposed to um, temperature changes or pH changes, it acts as a protection. They also have a cell wall and that cell wall gives them a protection from basically the environment again and it gives them a support. It also is a way that they can stop themselves from swelling or bursting if they move into an environment that's too extreme for them, if it's too salty or it's too dilute. The plasma membrane um, underneath that cell wall, the cell membrane that is there, controls what can get in and what can get out. Um, and they'll also have a, in some species, a flagellum, which is a tail for want of a better term. It's not a tail like a cat has a tail, it's more of a thread and it pokes out from the cell wall and what it allows it to do is to move from one place to another place. Those structures are critical to a bacteria being able to do what it does, which is effectively to be a phenomenal jack of all traits, an organism that can basically do all the things in one cell that many other organisms will basically have thousands of cells to do. It won't necessarily do any of those one things better than the other, but when you are a one-celled organism you and you live in the environment, you have to have a way of responding to that environment and meeting the challenges that it gives you. And so while bacteria are comparatively basic, they are broadly one of the most numerous organisms on the planet, despite the fact that you can't see them with the naked eye.